Hello, you're watching Telecom TV from the TIP Summit at the Fuse 2022 event here in Madrid. Now I'm joined today by Deutsche Telekom and Mavenir, and to my left, Kai Hengske, who is the Services and Platform DevOps Engineer at Deutsche Telekom, and Frank Armin, who is Chief Solutions Architect at Mavenir. Welcome to both of you. Now, we're going to be talking about Mavenir's delivery of, of 5G SA core to, to Deutsche Telekom. So first of all, I'd like to ask Kai, um, what, does it, what does it actually mean to Deutsche Telekom to implement a fully open network? So fully open network actually uh, allows us to disaggregate the whole world architecture, the whole world network, and uh, this helps us uh, definitely to yeah, achieve more and to have bigger insights and better insights into the system. And uh, to have that, we break up the silo approaches at all, meaning from this one big block in the middle, uh, to an open and integrated system where we have the deep insights, where we can steer the stuff properly to our needs as a Deutsche Telekom perspective. And uh, Marvin is doing a, a great job on that to, to achieve our goals. And we do it also in a collaborative way. So meaning uh, that we use uh, in a collaborative and tight, agreed way uh, to configure, to manage, uh, to software updates and so on uh, in, in, yeah, in that way so that we are able to you know, bring things quicker into the system, quicker into the production cycles and so on. And uh, for that, we have this openness also in the way of uh, how the stuff is configured, how the stuff is deployed. And for that, we don't use a so-called big monolithic uh, orchestrator. We go for a kind of a different GitOps approach. And uh, this helps us to either document the stuff, also uh, to yeah to steer a bit the conversation on is this necessary, do we need to change here and that, and everything is the documentation itself is the configuration and the deployments. And uh, this gives us a very confident view right now to driving the cloud native principles forward. Well, we're going to talk about GitOps a little bit later, but, sure. but first of all, can I ask you what, what role the core plays in enabling a 5G standalone network that has an, an open architecture approach? So, yeah, the openness gives us the hint and also then the architectural changes uh, definitely on that. So we, now we go for this disaggregation, meaning we have microservices, which also creates a little bit of complexity in the overall system, but this allows also emerging into new systems, into new markets, meaning when we go for a standalone on the 5G level. Uh, for example, network slicing is a big topic right now. Uh, there we can steer on a software base where are the resources shared and how they are shared, uh, go into uh, private networks to deploy them easily. And for that, it helps us to yeah, break up the rules and uh, go for uh, this aggregation. And for that, the architectural ways are changing. Also, where we are deploying it. We are going for edge deployment. It's not only having a handful of um, locations where we deploy the stuff. It could be kind of everywhere close to the customer. And uh, for that, it's not only, let's say, an opportunity, but also challenges for us right now. So this model needs to be in a way to handle it as a paradigm shift as well. Right now, please provide. It's not anymore the, the focus. We go in the direction of having this strong collaboration and um, it also helps us now to think about how does an end-to-end -end service look like? How do we monitor the things? How to get the overall metrics, loggings, all these uh, information sets out of the system into a common place and verify the stuff then. And for that, we use the best case cloud native principles and standardized uh, principles for that to achieve those goals. Frank, perhaps we could we talk about GitOps for a, a moment. and. Um Mavenir has done a special adaptation, hasn't it, of its, its 5G SA core that will allow it to run on GitOps rather than the 3GPP standard. So taking configuration management as, as an example, um, traditionally the network functions in a network, they receive their application uh, data or configuration data from an element management system through protocols like uh, NetConf. Mavenir's network functions uh, being truly cloud native and decomposed into microservices, each having its own configuration data has enabled us to exploit the capabilities that are offered by Kubernetes 
um, to um, to run and to simplify the required adaptation to run on GitOps. So, for example, or to start with, Kubernetes defines an object known as config map, which is a dictionary of all the configuration data that an application requires. When any changes are applied through Git, the development or the deployment tools would apply these changes in the config map, but that does not necessarily mean that these configuration values or the new values are reflected in the application. Mavenir has developed a mechanism within its application to continuously monitor any config changes within the config map or the configuration file stored within the application so that once there are new values, it would be reflected directly into the application. Having this mechanism in place allows our applications to run and uh, apply these new changes with zero downtime. Okay, thanks for explaining that, Farang. Um, and in driving the adoption of open networks, um, can you tell us more about some of the, the engagements that Mavenir is, is involved with um, in the EMEA region? Sure. So currently we are uh, engaged in the uh, I-14Y Lab Plugfest, which is currently taking place in Berlin. And we are participating with our open beam massive MIME radio uh, to test it against the ORU um, uh, functionality test cases, which are actually defined by TIP. Moreover, we also have, we are working with closely with our partners in the ecosystem with several customers to test and deploy open RAN and massive MIMO solutions, including Turk Telecom, Zain Kuwait, STC Saudi, and Orange France. Now, we're at the TIP Summit, um, so I'd like to ask both of you, and Kai, I'll start with, with you. you know, why is Deutsche Telekom a, a, a TIP member, an active TIP member as well? Active TIP member. So uh, I'm coming from the core perspective, but generally speaking, um, it's good to have those collaborations, definitely, uh, to, to share the, the thoughts, to share uh, the problems, the features which will come, uh, to share also the, the challenges upcoming. And uh, what I've heard, for example, yesterday was about uh, energy efficiency, which will be one major step forward uh, to, to achieve such goals. And uh, it's, it's good to get the knowledge uh, and to, to share yeah, the information uh, among the vendors and also having strong collaborations uh, with the vendors and the operators from, uh, from, the, from different countries. And also, uh, yeah, so that, that's quite good to, to have that. And, and, and the same for Mavenir. You know, why is Mavenir a, a TIP member? Well, having the open interfaces across suppliers in a wide ecosystem introduces the challenges of um, integration and interoperability. For us, TIP uh, acts as an enabler to harmonize all the different testing and integration activities uh, to lower the barriers and fulfill the promises of the openness by the ecosystem. I'd like to focus on one aspect of, of TIP's work, and that's the test and validation framework. Um, Frank, first of all, you know, how have you used this to, to help you with, with, with Mavenir's product development? Well, I mean, uh, the test and validation framework offered by TIP uh, allows us the unique opportunity to collaborate with service providers globally and have a better understanding uh, of the market requirements, which is then reflected directly into our future development. Um, this enables us to approach customers having already their requirements being developed, validated and certified by TIP. And, and Kai, the same question really, or a similar question. Do, does the Deutsche Telekom utilize TIP's test and validation framework to, to help with product selection? It might be, yes. Uh, so the, the good thing is uh, to get an understanding on what we can expect from the products, what we can expect from the software components. Uh, in which technology readiness level they are in the end, uh, what we can achieve, meaning is it just a lab trial, something fancy to check out, or is it something we can drive forward towards a production cycle, which uh, helps us a bit to figure out in which direction we'll go. And in the best case, if such certi certifications are there, uh, we can also expect a, a shorter time to improve and uh, integrate things into whatever, for example, a product cycle. Good to hear. Well, you know, you've both spoken about ecosystem and, and, and the community, but I'd like to know what you, you got out of at, attending Fuse, because, um, you know, we're back in person. Um, can I ask you, Kai, first of all, you know, what, what have you gained most from being here at Fuse? A lot of talks uh, I heard, so this is quite interesting for me. From, from a coordinate perspective, it's a little bit more new for me as well, but to see, let's say, what others are doing and uh, how to make uh, the features on the run side most probably also better and uh, what can we might expect in future 
and certain technologies on that. So this is something really uh, I was looking into and uh, can also, let's say, report on that uh, internally. And Frank, what have you gained most from being here at Fuse? Well, I mean, for me, it was an opportunity to learn that um, Oran is all over. So it's not only not only in the US or in Europe, but it's all over the world. It's in Asia. There's special focus uh, in the Middle East and also in Asia. Um, and of course, getting to know the, uh, getting to personally get to know the partners from the ecosystem, uh, and listening to the customer, uh, to our customer requirements and needs, and and where are we going with Rick and and the automation and all the promises that that Orang um, delivers. Uh, and of course, uh, as as Kai said, so it was an opportunity for us to uh, to learn um, where the ecosystem is taking us and and um, how can we be pe better prepared for, uh, for the upcoming activities and the, uh, yeah, the next stage of, of Oran. Well, final question then, it links directly to what you just said. You know, Kai, what's next for, for Deutsche Telekom in its open and disaggregation journey? Exactly, so to drive that automation forward and the automation at all is, is one key aspect. Uh, so this is something we really look into. Um, besides that, the, the feature set of the 5GSA should be broader, meaning we integrate new network functions, we expose uh, differently internally to have analytics, to, to achieve more out of what we are deploying. And uh, on a feature level, network slicing is the, the hot topic for now. Also private networks to deploy it where a customer is needed at on a business level and also maybe on a private level. Let's see where we can, uh, what we can achieve. And uh, let's say also from a short-term perspective, um, integration of uh, voice over new radio, meaning that we have in the end a proper 5G, uh, let's say feature set uh, for the customers. That's great. Well, Kai and Frank, thank you both very much for talking with us today. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us.